Hi guys, I'm Marie. And I'm Maddie. Today we are covering the case of David O'Sullivan. And we have actually talked about him from time to time as he is somebody who was hiking the PCT, which is the Pacific Crest Trail, if you don't know. I just want to get the stats on the PCT really quick. You don't already have the stats for the PCT memorized? God, you would think that I would. Fucking shame. Seriously. Absolute shame. So the Pacific Crest Trail is about 2,653 miles. That's literally insane. That's so close to what I was going to just blurt out and guess. Really? Like your guess? Yeah. It goes through California, Oregon, Washington, British Columbia, and Canada. Goes all the way from Canada to Mexico. But it is a crazy, crazy trail. And I think that it takes a special kind of person to really hike the entire Pacific Crest Trail. That and the Appalachian Trail. Yeah. Both. Both. You have to be a little crazy, which is ironic because people think that we're crazy just for like the little hikes that we do or like the hundred mile hikes that we do, like the smaller ones. I don't think I'm a PCT type of girl. I don't think I'm a carrying all my gear for six months type of person. For me, it would be the time that it takes. Like six months, people do it in like three to six to nine months. I That's a long time. Would say it's like six to nine months unless you're like batshit. Like and you're running. Balls to the wall. Like and then you're fast, three fast, to four fast. months. So PCT, super, super crazy. So David O'Sullivan grew up in the countryside outside of Middleton in Cork County in Southwest Ireland. After graduating from the University College Cork in 2014 with a degree in English, and by 2016, he had set his mind to hike the PCT. Before entering the real world, David is 25 and planned five months for hiking the PCT. So... He's at least past that three-month mark, but he's still, like, planning on moving pretty fast. And he made this plan in April of 2017 after reading the book Wild, which also became a movie, by the way. It's the one with Bruce Witherspoon. So he spent a lot of time preparing for this trip. He hiked the, this is probably butchered, but he hiked the Kuranta Hill, which is the highest peak in Ireland at 1,000 38 meters or 3,407 feet, which is a fraction of the elevation that he would encounter on the PCT. However, this is the highest mountain in Ireland. It's really his only option to condition. There is also zero snow on this mountain in Ireland. And while hiking the PCT, you encounter snow. His permit ended up being an early season permit in March, which they do permits to minimize the impact on the environment. And his permit is early season March. Mid-April to early May is a more ideal time to start this hike. So if you get the good permit, it's usually between April and May for starting. His is a little earlier than that. So... He also turned his parents' garage into a gym, and he would go hiking with weights. And he did all of this while completing a media course and getting his degree in English and saving money working in a local garage. So he's saving money, saving up, preparing the best that he can in the environment that he has. His mom said as a child he was full of fun and mischief and often spent his time making people laugh. He grew into a thoughtful, kind, and loving young man and was loyal to his friends and family. His mom said he wasn't an athlete, but he did enjoy hiking and bicycling and also had a black belt in karate. So saying that he's not an athlete, maybe she just means he's not a natural athlete. Is she saying he's not a natural athlete or he doesn't like sports? She just said not an athlete. I don't know. I would. I wouldn't call you an athlete, though. 
No, I'm not a sports person. An athlete isn't just sports, though, is it? Well, yeah, but are you saying I'm not an athlete because I'm not, like, into sports or, like... No, I would say you're not an athlete because you're not physically fit in a way that you could, like... I don't know. Do something. I don't know. I don't... I don't know. I guess it depends on your description of an athlete for what her intentions are on that, but... Well, I would say he's a black belt in karate, but he's not an athlete. You would have to be at least a little fit to get a black belt in karate. So, like... I would think so, yeah. For him to say, for her mom, for, like... Maybe he just didn't do sports growing up. That's what I'm thinking she meant, because... A black belt in karate and... Because that... Saying he's not an athlete makes me think, like, he's not fit. He's not, like... Right. Athletic. He would leave Middleton County, Cork, Ireland on March 20th, and he would arrive in camp on the 22nd and plan to hike from the Mexican border to the Canadian border. Mm Mm-hmm. Which he would have to do this starting when he's starting because there's going to be too much snow on the Canadian side at this time of year. So he would need the Canadian side to be at the end of his hike. So his trail name was Leprechaun. Irishman, heavy, heavy Irish accent. Right. Super Real creative. Super creative guy. Yeah. <laughs> super creative. Okay, so David stands at 5'10 and 154 pounds with brown hair, blue eyes, and he wore glasses as well. At least he's not a ginger because that would have made the Leprechaun name. Um, all- yeah, he's got like brownish hair, so... So one week after his trek started, he wrote an email stating that he was surprised and disappointed about how few hikers were out on the trail. He also wrote that he wasn't covering as much distance as he'd hoped and about how other hikers he shared campsites with helped him realize that his pack was too heavy. Always. Always. Oh, he said that he had gotten his kilos and pounds mixed up when measuring his own weight. So he thought he, I think going out, he thought he had like a lighter pack than he did because he had messed up when he was weighing stuff. Because every, all the information, a lot of the information out there for the PCT and like what you should carry and your weight is probably in pounds. Yeah. And they use kilos in Ireland, I'm assuming. Yeah. I'm not sure. Probably. Maybe. Who uses pounds? We do. (laughs) Literally just us. We're the the only idiots. He would also stop in town to pare down his load. So he would purchase a lighter sleeping pad, a lighter tent, along with other items. He said, I've been flying ever since, dropping about 12 pounds. He could fucking drop 12 pounds off of his pack. I don't even want to know what it weighed when he started. Like that one lady that we saw when we did the, that one, when we did Tour du Mont Blanc. <laughs> yes. I couldn't remember. Which it. lady? I'm, I, we saw her twice while we were hiking. Okay. And she was not staying in hostels. She was camping. Mm-hmm. She had her whole ass pack, probably weighed like gigantic. 60, 70 pounds. Yeah, like it was not gigantic. even kidding. It was huge. Yeah. And she was, remember, she was frail as fuck. She was and she had her struggling. Stick and, I I would be surprised if she made it to the end of that hike. I don't want to know where she was starting because then we were talking about her with other hikers and other hikers had seen her at different points in their hike. Yeah, so she'd been out there for a while. Yeah, when I did Wonderland, we actually brought a scale to the parking lot and we weighed everybody's bags before we left. And my pack for nine days was 32 pounds. That's with my food and my water. The next person was, like, 45. Like, big difference. And the heaviest one was, like, 60. So you can very, very easily get your pack weight super high up. And I would say my pack weight now would be even lighter than that. Because that was my first, like, multi-day backpacking trip ever. So I would say my pack would be even lighter than that now. But 12 pounds, just by, like, switching out a few things, getting rid of a few things, like, that's a big deal. Yeah, it is. It's a lot of weight to drop. So he would write to his dad, there's been a lot of rainfall lately. So weather's also not what he anticipated initially, probably. All the desert flowers are blooming. So pretty. He said, 
I can often smell their perfume-like aroma as I hike. Most of the place is covered in green, and there were streams everywhere for the first few days. It's a weird time to be in Southern California. It's not usually like this. But it sounds like he's still, like, in good spirits about it. Yeah. Another hiker, Daniel Winsor, wrote in his blog about encountering Dave from Ireland. When they both stopped at the Paradise Valley Cafe for the iconic famous burger that PCT hikers boasted about and is only a mile off the trail. So a lot of times when you do like these longer trails, people will be like, oh, you have to stop here. Like people will write in trail registries, like if you can do a side trip here, go and visit this. And when you're hiking something like the PCT, I imagine an amazing, iconic, famous burger would be like you wouldn't be able to avoid that for one mile. I would for sure be taking that side trip. Windsor wrote, Cracked lips and peeling skin attested to his story of losing his son hat a few days ago. He had worked at a gas station for a long time to save up for this trip. Some people make some serious long-term sacrifices to be out here. And he dubbed him Lucky Dave after he was able to get a ride back to the trail when Daniel had to walk the mile back. So he basically blogged about him saying, yep, he lost his hat. And this Daniel blogged his entire PCT hike too. He would later say that O'Sullivan's incredibly bad sunburn stood out in his memory. I got a kind of general feeling that he was kind of getting slapped around by being out on the trail, but said he seemed in high spirits and did not seem to have any intention of quitting. By April 5, David finds himself in Idlewild, which is a small mountain town at the base of San Jacinto Mountain. He's about 180 miles into his trek at this point. He spent two nights at the Idlewild Inn. He visited the library and signed the PCT trail register at the post office when he tried to pick up a charger that he had been waiting for, but it was delayed, hence his second day in Idlewild. So he had planned to spend one day there, and he had planned to have a charger delivered to the post office there because he did have a Kindle with him, but he had brought the wrong charger. He also messaged a friend saying that he was getting things sorted out, but it had been hard so far. He said, I knew it would be hard, but damn, I love it. So his mom said he arrived into this little town on the 5th called Idlewild. It's about halfway up the mountain toe. He did a few chores. He got in touch with all his friends on Facebook, contacted us. Everything was going fine. He was leaving on the morning of the 7th, and he's not been heard of since. He also messaged his friend in Santa Barbara, saying that he planned to hike about 470 miles further to the Ridgecrest area where the trail transitioned from the Mojave Desert into the Sierra Nevadas and catch a bus to Santa Barbara for a week-long visit. And he estimated that he would be there in about four weeks. Right, so on this day, he makes plans... For his next, like, time off, his next, like, long stay. Mm -hmm. But his adapter would not get picked up and would actually be returned to the retailer. David did not have a working cell phone and his Kindle needed Wi-Fi in order to communicate. And now we also know that his charger is delayed. He also had no GPS or SOS device. So he had told his family that there would be long stretches of time where he would not be able to communicate with them. But by the end of April, his mom and dad, Carmel and Khan, had contacted the Pacific Crest Trail Association where they were told to sit tight and wait for him to turn up. So basically, it's been almost a month since anybody's heard from him. But they're telling him he's he'll turn up. Just sit tight. I'm sure it happens a lot in the PCT where people panic and call them. Right. And But a month? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. About four weeks after David was last seen, his friend from Santa Barbara messaged him 
hey, when should I expect you to arrive here? But he received no response, and the next day he would also send hello with no response. Because remember, he had told his friend in Santa Barbara to expect him in about four weeks. Mm -hmm. David's family would call the Pacific Trail Association again, where they were told that they were not a babysitting service. I'm sorry, the least whoever is answering these phone calls could do if it's been a long-ass time and they're, like, really worried about him. Oh, yeah, you know, we'll have our rangers keep an eye out for his name on the sign logs, or we'll just make sure that we have people keeping an eye out to see if we can see yeah. him. Not, we're not a babysitting service. Well, like, and that's the thing. Like, I get that they probably, you're probably right, they probably get a ton of phone calls and you register with the Pacific Trail Association, but they don't track people. They don't follow people. They don't make sure that everybody comes out. Like, that's not the extent. Like, yeah, because that's not their job. They're just a registry. That's not their right. job. But, like, I feel like... Notify the locals, at least, or something. Like, I don't know. Just check the registries. Like, you know where the registries are placed. See if he made it to the next one. Yeah. Check the next as registry. As simple as that. Yeah. Oh, where did you say he was last? Oh, okay, let me check the nearest registry to that, the next right. one. Right, and then if he didn't show up at that registry, then tell the parents, maybe contact the local police because we don't have him making it to his next location. And then everything could have been started a lot a sooner. Lot sooner. Now, the most popular route for David to go would have been the Devil's Slide. But there had been an unusual amount of snow that year, and other hikers had reported turning back after a mile. And remember, David does not have experience hiking in the snow. David was also using a map created for the PCT called the Half Mile Map, and it advised hikers to hike up Black Mountain Road when there was snow in order to skirt past the most dangerous part of the trail. There are five different trail options, though, that David could have taken to connect back to the PCT. And no one really knows which one he took. That's hard. There was no indication that David had planned for snow, and he had told other hikers that he had no intention of hiking in the snow. And there was no record of him buying any snow equipment prior to his journey. He had planned to flip-flop, skipping over the Sierra portion of the trail initially, and then returning later when more snow had melted, which a lot of hikers do. So they skip that portion, but then they go back and they finish it once the snow is melted. So we really just don't know where, where he, he went. went or what he did. Yeah. So a hiker named John King of Idlewild had posted on March 30th, 2017, that he had recommended using micro spikes or crampons or traction or poles or an ice axe for support. He also said that many PCT trail hike posts above 8,000 remained hidden under snow drifts. So the posts, like that would be like the markers that tell you you're going the right way. Those so, are hidden under snow drifts. Right. So it's going to be a lot harder for David to find his route. Yeah. Especially considering he has no GPS. And anything. the GPS really did save us on ours. And I feel like if you're doing a Freaking big hike, you need to get saved our lives. We saved. And multiple other hikers. Yeah. And maybe not necessarily even just saving our lives, but saving us from going the okay, wrong direction. Correct. For we like probably wouldn't have died. We probably wouldn't have died, but we ran into a lot of people who got off course and ended up hiking a lot of extra miles mm -hmm. or getting in at midnight instead of like four o'clock when we got in because they went they nine got miles lost in the wrong yeah. direction um yeah but we we used gaia on that trip which is what i still use to this day dude i think anything anything is better than nothing than nothing but also if you don't have a way to charge your phone it's not going to do you any good either yeah so there's a record that he made a 70 dollar purchase at a local outdoor store called nomads but there's no itemized record of what he purchased. He also visited an ATM and took out a small amount of money, just enough for food at the next stop. Right, so... 
And with so he could have bought anything. He could have bought new socks. I was going to say a seventy. He could have bought in micro spikes. You could get micro spikes for seventy dollars. Poles. poles. You could get. You could probably get a set of micro spikes and poles for, for seventy dollars. But we don't know. He could have needed new socks. He could have needed anything. He could have bought granola bars. I mean, we really don't could know. Could have bought a jacket. Yeah, maybe his burner burnt out for his cook set. I yeah, mean, so who knows what he bought for... You can get a lot for $70. Or you can get very little for $70. But we don't know yeah. if that $70 purchase contributed to his hike in any way. I would guess since it was at an outdoor store, I would assume. It's I mean, like in any way that would have made it easier for him to hike in the snow or find his way. Yeah. True. A sizable amount that he had saved would remain in his account. So the rest of his money doesn't move out of that account. It stays in there. Right. Now, when his family initially reached out to the bank, yeah. they were told that his bank account was still active. And they took this to mean that he was okay and just not in touch. This would be wrong. And they would find out that the activity on his account was actually just scheduled transactions right so some sort of debit that was previously scheduled probably like a payment of some kind Um, i'm glad i'm fucked if i go missing nothing's getting paid for because i have no automatic anything anything anymore (laughs) the only one that's automatic is my prime if i even still have that if i didn't cancel it well the good news is i'll be able to see if you've used your bank account because i'm fucking on your bank account still yeah but i won't know what bills to pay well, none of my I don't I got my phone bill. But if you're missing, I think your bills are going to be the last of your concern probably. Uh, yeah, probably. By June, the family contacted the police again. But they had trouble getting a missing persons report filed and some of this was jurisdictional issues. And an Irish outreach group in San Diego would get involved. It would be July 13 before David was officially logged as a missing person. What? July 13th? July 13th. Impressive. This man went missing no. in the beginning of April. Like April's probably went missing on like April 7. Well, cuz he never even picked up his thing in the morning. Right. But so he, did he even leave that town? Did he get murdered in that town? We honestly, like, we'll get to that. We'll get to cause that. Cuz he never even picked up his charger. Now, eventually a search would be launched in Whitewater Preserve, which is north of San Juancito Mountain. So the direction that David would have traveled with a focused effort around Fuller Ridge, a five-mile stretch of the PCT that was still covered in ice and snow that April, and hikers in 2017 had reported dangerous experiences of sliding off the trail in this area. And if you remember, we have talked about San Jacinto before. So San Juacito Peak rises to 10,834 feet, which... I have elevation sickness. In fact, four other hikers had to be rescued that March and April that he went missing in that area. And the park service is like, we're not a babysitting service. I know, dude. Search and rescue, also with helicopters, dogs, and ATVs, found no sign of David. So there are many eyewitness statements about hikers being David on the trail after his disappearance, but none of them could be confirmed. There was also a hiker with a German accent that looked quite similar to David. And since a lot of the reports were just a hiker with an accent, a lot of them thought it was this German man. Or any other hiker that was out there that year, which we'll we'll talk about that too in a second. But another witness claims that he had picked up someone matching David's description between April 10th and 15th. Also could not be confirmed. Um, The search would be over by October 2017 and Riverside law enforcement would close the case on October 12th, 2017, saying... At this time, there is no additional investigative leads. No additional information has been received that would show O'Sullivan was in fact lost or missing on the portion of the PCT within the department's jurisdiction. Or prove O'Sullivan was in the Idlewild area. This case will be closed exceptional until further information is developed. Right, and closed exceptional in a criminal case 
means police believe they know who committed a crime, but they aren't technically able to solve the crime. Like, say the suspect is dead or they don't have enough evidence. So they'll close a case, exceptional, to say it's closed, we can't do anything more on it. Unless something else comes forward. Unless something else comes forward. I'm not sure exactly what it means in a... I'm I'm assuming it's kind of similar. Like, they think they know what happened to him. He went missing out on the trail. But they kind of even sound like they don't know for sure if that's what happened either. So it sounds like they just don't have enough information. And there are times where they claim they don't believe he is in their jurisdiction too. So it doesn't sound like they are being very helpful if we're being honest. They would tell David's parents it could be years or never before their son's remains were discovered. So to me, that indicates that they believe he is deceased, but they don't know where he is, or even if he's in their jurisdiction. Police contacted the water district that operated a drinking fountain where the trail reaches the desert floor after a steep descent, and it is known that almost all PCT hikers stop there. They asked them to review their security footage to see if he had made it to the fountain, which would have confirmed if he made it out of Idlewild or not. But they got no response from the water district. They also reached out to Amazon to see if his Kindle could be tracked, but received no response. Now, according to the press enterprise, Kathy Tarr was leading the ongoing volunteer effort to find David, and she would speak to witnesses And she could not actually confirm if anyone had encountered David after the 5th of April. She did find pictures of that other hiker that looked a lot like David and confirmed that there were hikers from 31 countries on the PCT that year that would have had distinct accents that may have been confused with David's. Because you might be saying, okay, a German hiker that looks like David is not going to sound like David. But a lot of people aren't good with accents. They hear an accent and that's all they remember. Oh, he had an accent. But they don't necessarily remember what dialect it might have come from or area it might have come from. Is dialect the right word? No? Tar also got in touch with Amazon who confirmed that David's Kindle was last updated on April 5. But it did not have GPS, so its location could not be searched. She would also determine that the Desert Water Agency did not have any video where the fountain was. Also, they have been trying to get permission to search with drones for David, but it's a designated state wilderness, so that's not technically allowed. They don't want you to see the cryptids and the monsters that they hide (laughs) in the National Forest. So basically, this volunteer is able to get information from the water district and from Amazon that police did not follow up on. That's annoying. So in December of 2017, an aerial survey would be done over Idlewild, where 88 square miles of mountain face and desert were photographed and analyzed, looking for David's blue backpack, but nothing was found in the 1,235 color images that the drone footage would have recovered and analyzed, and all of this was with no luck. I've gone through footage like this before. So, like, there have been searches done in our area where they do. People take their drones, they fly over, or aerial searches will take pictures, and then they basically ask for volunteers to just, like, scour the footage to see and mark anywhere where they see color or something reflective or anything that might be something something out of place right exactly it's actually like kind of satisfying but also like horrible at the same time i would do it oh for sure you'd be really good at it on the five year anniversary god five years the fowler and o'sullivan foundation would post Which, by the way, this is the foundation that was started by that volunteer that we were talking about. That found all that shit. Right. And Fowler is another missing hiker that went missing on the PCT. It's been a heartbreaking 
five years for David's family, friends, and loved ones who are so very far away. Our search efforts continue later this month as we have not given up our efforts to locate David. Our goal is to bring David back to Ireland and to his family. We're still looking for you, David. This foundation also held a drawing to give away 12 Garmin InReach Mini GPS tracking devices and pay for activation plus seven months of service to randomly selected Pacific Crest Trail hikers, which I think is super cool. Those are really expensive. His mom posted on Facebook, David was a happy little boy, full of fun, and he had a great laugh. He was also a good student and a stand-up comedian and a vicarious reader. He jogged, hiked, cycled, and loved the outdoors. She would say, our world turned upside down in 2017 and will never again be the same. We would give anything to find David and know what happened to him on that fateful day in April. And that right there is why we still go out and fucking look for people. Because there is no closure. There is no way to move on and move past this when you have no idea what happened to your loved one. The sheriff's department did say that it does not support the idea of families carrying out their own searches after the case has been suspended or closed due to the inherent dangers. It is best to leave the searches to law enforcement professionals. But my question is, what are the families supposed to do after law enforcement has given up? They're just supposed to leave their loved ones out there to rot? Yeah. That's really what they want families to do? We want you to forget. Seriously. Now, remember I said that we had talked about the San Jacinto Mountains before? That was on the 2005 John Donovan case where John would go missing and was last seen in the San Jacinto Mountains heading towards Fuller Ridge. And remember, that was one of the places they searched for David. And we covered his story as a two-parter in our Lost in the San Jacinto Mountains about Brandon Day and Gina Allen, who, when they got lost in the mountains the following year, would be saved by John's abandoned campsite and gear. They would use his matches to start a fire leading to their rescue, which would lead to the recovery of John, who had been trapped in that valley. I remember that one. Oh. Also, I will put a link in this episode if you want to go and listen to that one because it's a really good one. In recent years, other missing hikers have been found after getting permission for drone searches. Two missing persons were both spotted by a man named Morgan Clemens who was scouring the footage. So basically this guy twice was able to find a hiker who had gone missing and perished. Families were able to locate them because he found them in the Mm -hmm. drone footage. This gave David's mom hope, and she was happy for them, but it also made her a little jealous that they had closure and she still didn't have her son. The passage of time in one way, it does ease the pain, but in another, I don't think it ever will. Yeah. And what would be David's 30th birthday approaching? She would say it's hard to think of her and her husband getting older, but David never does. Will. Yeah. Mm. Now, if you want to support the Flower O'Sullivan Foundation, there will be a link in our show notes for that. And they basically spend money on searches, they spend money on GPS trackers for hikers and things like that. On the Pacific Crest Trail Association website, there are safety tips, and they are as follows. There is an intrinsic risk in the wilderness, and you are responsible for your own safety. Be prepared and learn first aid. Let someone know your plans. If you're on a day hike, tell someone where you're going and when you expect to return. Long-distance hikers... Leave a copy of your itinerary with someone. Check in regularly and let them know when you'll check in next. And have a plan for what they'll do if you don't. Be mentally prepared for the risks you may encounter. 
Think through scenarios ahead of time and decide how you might respond. Travel within your skill level. Always carry current maps and know how to use them. Cell phones and rescue beacons can save lives in emergencies, but they don't guarantee your safety. Rely on your own skills and intuition, not on your technology. Use extra caution if hiking alone. Be wary of people who make you uneasy. Stay on the trail. The moment you leave, you're in the wilderness. If something goes wrong, you may never be found. All good advice, I think. Yeah. And things that we've said over and over and over again. Just be as prepared as you can. Yeah, so that is the case of David O'Sullivan. If you want to hear our rants on getting off topic, there's probably a lot of them at the end of this episode. Also, if you don't know, at the end of our episodes, after the music plays, is usually where I move all of our shenanigans to. So something to check out. And before we sign off, we have some new Patreons. We have Andrea Whitman. Hi, Andrea. Welcome to Patreon. We also have John Tucker. Hi, John. We also have Parker Miles. Hi, Parker. Ooh, what's that one? Mm. Mm. Farron. Welcome to Patreon. We also have Lisa Pardon. Hi, Lisa. We have Heather K. Hi, Heather. Casey Brewer. Yep. Hi, Casey. And Jacob Allison. Hi, Jacob. Welcome to Patreon. All right. Thank you guys so much for supporting us. We really appreciate it. Come and check us out on social media. We'd love to hear from you guys. All right. Bye. Do you know what supplements are in there? Yeah, let me look at it. I know it has a probiotic. Okay. It's got some good stuff in there. I need to start taking a probiotic. I never keep up on the probiotics. I always stop that one. I always forget. Mm -hmm. That's why I like it being combined with mine mm -hmm. because then I don't forget it. But it has really high reviews. What's in it? Okay, so it has an antioxidant, 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 don't mind my chewing, it has a multivitamin, a probiotic, a COQ10, mm, I don't know what that is, it's a powerful antioxidant that helps your body produce more cellular energy and helps with he healthy cardiovascular function and supports your overall health, and then it has in EFA, which is an essential fatty acid. And then it has fruit and vegetable. So fruit and veggie supplement too. Okay. The essential fatty acids helps with brain, heart, and joint health as mm -hmm. well. And it's a stress suppressor. Mm. I mean, it'd be ideal to be able to get everything that you need through your food. But I just don't. I can't. I just can't. Yeah, I've tried. It just doesn't happen. I have not tried, but if my mother can't do it, then I <laughs> definitely can't do it because uh, my grocery trips look like a 12-year-old is buying groceries. I can actually vouch for that because still sometimes when I pull up my Fred Meyer order to like order my groceries, it's like your previous purchases. And I'm like, what the fuck is all of this? And none of it is anything that I would buy. Do you know they buy. sell a 50-pack of fruit roll-ups at Costco? Of course they do. Do you know what I bought yesterday? <laughs> it's actually 49 rolls. It's not 50. Oh, it's 49. God. I'm not Still. sure why it's not 50. It really bothers me. It's like that one time that uh, I sent Shed to pick up the groceries, and he came home, and he's like, were you high when you ordered groceries? And I was like, what? And I start opening the bags, and there's, like, soda and, like, chips and, like, all this stuff that I would never in my life order. And I was like this is not our grocery order. And he was like, what do you mean? And I was like, this is not our grocery order. And I call them and they're like, oh yeah, we gave you the wrong grocery order. I'm like, fuck. He was like, 
He was like, when I saw them start loading in the soda, I figured something might be wrong, but I was like, I'm just the messenger. Like, I'm just here to pick it up. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um. also, to all of our fucking listeners in general, if you're, like, a door dasher, you need to watch out. They've been finding door dashers. A door dasher went to deliver his food was found 12 hours later in garbage bags in a fucking dumpster. What? They're murdering people. They're mor- murdering door dashers and stuff. People are like, they're de- going to- Where? De- I actually don't remember. Emma told me about it. <laughs> <laughs> Emma's a door dasher and she told me about it, so. If you're a door dasher, watch yourself. I've also, seen... if you're ordering door dash, watch also, yourself. Also, <laughs> don't turn around in anyone's driveway at all or get stuck. Ever. <laughs> or get into the wrong car on accident. There was, like, a hot second where I was doing, like, Instacart orders during COVID when everybody was, like, stuck home and it was really financially beneficial to do Instacart. And there would be some orders where it would take me to, like, the middle of nowhere and it'd be like, you have arrived at your destination. And I'm like, I'm in a field and there is nobody here. I'm like, this something is terribly wrong. Oh, my God. I was sure that I was going to be murdered, though, during that time. Um, I would not be surprised uh two days ago in tampa bay okay so florida um is that florida yeah yeah Mm -hmm. yes they're all in florida actually well i mean think about it if you're a serial killer that's a really good way to lure victims to you yeah also i can't remember exactly what happened i'll have to look into it but there is a guy who was caught he was a serial killer and he was caught but his like, evidence of his crimes had been posted on TikTok by his neighbors. Like, of him bringing out a bloody-ass mattress. And then, like, it was on TikTok and everybody was, like, it went viral. People were freaking out. People were, like, calling the cops oh on this guy. Turns out this guy was 100% a serial killer. And he, the things that his neighbor was seeing that were, like, suspicious, it was multiple neighbors, too. It wasn't just one, like, single TikTok. Yeah, I think we've all had that neighbor where you're like, they definitely are murdering people in their spare time. And then you see them like digging in their yard and you're like, oh, they're burying a body. Can you imagine like actually discovering that your neighbor was a serial killer? Did you watch the one, um, the one thing on Netflix that came out recently about the one serial killer? Uh, why can't I remember his name? The guy that drilled the holes. In the brains. Oh, yeah, yeah. To try to, like... Jeffrey Dahmer. Make himself some zombies. Yeah. Yeah. His neighbor, they have her... Have you seen it? Did you see it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The neighbor. Uh Literally that whole experience. I had trouble watching that documentary, to be honest Um, with you. I was like... If you didn't have trouble watching that documentary, you have fucking problems. Well, there was, like, a time, like, it was pretty early on in the beginning, too, where I was like, this is not for me. And I turned it off. Shocking, right? Like, not for me. Murder and mayhem. Why not? But I was like, I can't watch it. And I turned it off. And then like a couple weeks later, I was like, uh, maybe I'll give it another try. And then I got like a couple more episodes in. And then I was like, nope, it's not for me. And I turned it off. And then like a month later, I was like, okay, I got to finish this thing. It was well done. I just, yeah, I did like the, from the neighbor's perspective though. Mm-hmm. I didn't watch every single episode of it, but I watched at least Enough the majority of it. of it. Yeah, yeah. Because I was so in and out not paying attention because even our listeners know this shit actually, like, affects me. <laughs> I'm not, like, shit like that. Like, well, and he he did do, like, the actor, whatever his name is. I can't remember. I don't fucking know. The I act- love him, though. I love. Yeah, he- the actor did do a really good job. Like, some people had beef with him, but I thought he did a great job of portraying the creepiest motherfucker people always have beef with him i think that the person that i follow who just was on naked and afraid he did one of the i think i think he did the pct this is him and i was like randomly like had a naked and afraid thing come through my feed the other day and i was like what the fuck is that and he literally went on naked and afraid this is him when he went on naked and afraid I wonder if I've seen his episode. So it's, uh, what is his name? Patrick or something like that. But he, the partner that he was with, I might have murdered a little bit. Like, I only saw, I only saw, like, one of the the episodes because it was just, like, randomly on the other day. And I was like, oh, dude, that's the guy that I see on the PCT all the time. Oh, my God. 
He made it to the end, though, on Naked and Afraid. But, like, he he was always wearing, like, this, like, I think it was, like, a hot dog shirt or something when he was hiking. It's like, what is that? Anyway, that was kind of funny. Did you tell our listeners about what you found out about your Garmin? Oh, my God, that it was just fucking off for, like, 11 months? Yes. Yeah, so randomly, usually when Maddie and I go backpacking or when I go out on my own, I will send a message to back home, like, hey, I made it to the summit. I'm heading back down. Should be home by this time or whatever. And the last couple messages that I had sent, I didn't get a reply from, which was strange. Like, as in the last couple, she means, like, the last, like, six to eight messages. Yeah, it was. (laughs) Like, the last, like, maybe, like, 10 to 12, (laughs) honestly. You know what the big red flag for me was is when we did Gothic Basin, and I didn't receive a message reply on that one. And remember, we had originally... We had a permit for a different hike, and we changed our location to Gothic Basin at the last minute because there wasn't a ton of snow there, and we could hike it without – there was a big bug issue, like mosquito issue, where our permit was. So we switched at the last minute, and when we got to Gothic, the top of Gothic Basin, I had sent a message, and I never received a reply. And I remember when we got home, I was, like, kind of annoyed about it, but then – Shed was also annoyed that he hadn't gotten a message from me. And I was like, I sent you a message. So that was the first time that I was like, oh, maybe something just happened and it didn't go through. Fast forward to a couple months later, and I realized that my Garmin isn't working at all. Like, at all. So I call them, and I'm like, hey, it looks like my Garmin is deactivated, but I can still pull it up. I can still send messages. It says message sent on there but it's just not actually doing anything and she was like oh yeah it looks like your credit card expired 11 months ago I'm like and you guys just turned it off without contacting me and she was like oh it says that we sent an email I'm like are you serious you sent one email and that's like good enough to turn off my garment I could have died 500 times in the last 11 months yeah no kidding I was so fucking pissed I actually was like out looking for like different services but there's really just nothing out there that is did you make a complaint to Garmin I don't know I mean I was probably frustrated with the person I was talking to but not only that but I had to like reactivate it and like pay a fee the reactivation fee or something and I was like this is bullshit you should put a complaint in with like the company because This is my official complaint. If anybody from Garmin is listening, (laughs) I wish I'd gotten a better resolution to my problem. (laughs) I hate complaining, though. I can't even send, like, food back at restaurants. Like, I just can't do it. I don't do that. That was a really big deal. I just, honestly, it just, it just tanks my loyalty. Like, if something else came along, I would have zero issue leaving Garmin at this point because of that issue. And not only that, but I love that fucking thing around for like 11 months for no reason. We should make a TikTok about it. That thing's heavy. Anyway, yeah, super annoying. If anybody is associated with Garmin, like, please tell them that they fucked up and they did not make it right. One, they didn't even seem to care. And two, it was a really big hassle to get it reactivated. And I had to pay, like, more money to get it reactivated. So I don't know. I just think that when you have a device on you and you're carrying a device that is supposed to save your life if something goes wrong. Just because my credit card went missing and I canceled it doesn't mean you – that means you call me. Right. Like figure it out. Like you can't just cancel something like that without notifying anybody. And also why does it look like it's still working if it's not? Yeah. Like, I open my app, everything looks good. I send a message, everything looks good. Like, that's some bullshit. But, like, it's not actually working. But, like, I get injured or something goes wrong, I can't actually call for help, but I don't know it until it's too late. No, you wouldn't know know it at all. You'd be dead. I'd be dead. Yeah. I guess guess you can't get sued if I'm dead, so not your problem. Yeah. Have you seen that one? 
It's funny. They did like a, a Gilmore Girl episode. She decides that she's going to go do wild. She's going to go hike the PCT. And she gets there and there's like a bunch of other women there. And they're like, are you here because of the book or the movie? And she's like, the book, of course, even though she's never read the book in her life. She's only seen the movie. So there's like the purists that are there for the book and then the other ones that are there because they saw the movie. And the ranger's just like, wild women over here. Um, Some of you are probably going to die. Please get out your permits. Like, (laughs) Oh, and the ranger at one point is like, It'll be poor visibility for shoe throwing today. So you might want to wait and start tomorrow because in the movie, she throws her shoe off of a cliff. Can you stop making noise with your mouth, please? For fuck's sake. Put the applesauce down. I straight up didn't even Are make you a, a toddler? Noise. Yes. <laughs> Leave me in my squeeze packs of applesauce the fuck alone. Maddie, Second- Maddie, I don't understand why I have gut issues. Maddie also eating processed <laughs> toddler food. Okay. Um, but I was also like all the way back here from my mic. Can you even hear me? Yes. Microphone? I can hear you do a lot of things, mostly breathing, but I can hear you do a lot of well, things in the microphone well, that I told breathing you. Because I usually stay right here where I would. <sighs> <sighs> That's how Maddie breathes in between every sentence. I'm <laughs> like, if it ever sounds like Maddie just runs on her sentences, it's because I have to cut out the. <sighs> <sighs> it's more like. <laughs> seriously I put I literally when I edit with my headphones on because usually I can hear fine without my headphones on but the other day my sister's kids were here and they're so fucking loud and so I put my headphones on while I was editing good yeah put your headphones on while you're babysitting a bunch of kids that's a great plan that's so good I'm just here to make sure the they next don't die you know, <laughs> Hannah's kids are opening the door they're down the street they're gone. You're calling the police. They are frantically even... looking for Lyndon. <laughs> She's gone. They won't even walk down the stairs without holding my hand. I'm pretty sure they're not leaving the house. <laughs> but I put my headphones on and they're like, they're like the noise counseling, like really like good. The noise gets counseled? Yeah. Counseled? Canceled. Shut up. And uh, all I can hear is like, <gasps> <gasps> I'm like, Oh, my God. Maddie needs to stop breathing. What the fuck? (laughs) I'm asthmatic. Okay, I can't breathe correctly. (laughs) No, she literally, like, instead of, like, I will take a breath while I'm talking, but I can do it quietly. I can't do that. (laughs) I don't understand. What do you mean? What do you mean take a breath while you're while you're talking? It doesn't make any sense. My air is going out of my mouth as I'm talking. I will pause and be able to, like, take a breath while I pause. I don't know. I don't understand how you breathe that easily. <laughs> and then in between my then, words, when I'm taking my breath, I'm gasping. Wait, even worse air. though? Well, it's not worse because Maddie's like lip smacking things are the worst. She's drinking her applesauce again right now if you can fucking hear that. But she'll move her feet and the cords from her electric blanket. Like mine will make some noise. But Maddie's are like it's clunk, my, clunk, clunk. It's because my electric blanket is not plugged into itself, so the cord is just, it's just sitting like on the all in there. And I just kind of stand on it while we record. I'm just like, hey, what in the fuck? I also is have going the cord on? for the old electric blanket underneath here. Too, I don't. I why do you have the cords everywhere? Take the cords off for fuck's sake! I actually have no cords around me right now as we speak. My blanket is plugged in because it's fucking freezing and I don't know how you're sitting down here without a heated blanket on. I will fall asleep if I turn the heated I know. blanket on. She's not lying actually about that. I okay. will and also I'm a twenty year old and have my apartment heat down on a regular basis. I can sit in this room. This is about the temperature of my apartment. I like a couple days ago because it's getting a little warmer here and when I say a little warmer I mean it's like in the fifties. It's going from being like forty to being like 58. 54. I think it's 58 is the high today. But I am still cold. And so, like, I turned the heater on the other day. No, I don't know how we're going to continue this podcast because I don't think I can live another winter in this state. I think I need to move somewhere warmer. I don't know how you've been surviving. This is because this is my first year where I've had the, my rain noise yeah. have actually been, like, painful. Yeah. Like, it's always been kind of uncomfortable, my circulation. But this year, yeah, it's painful. It 
hurts. My hands are cold all the time. Okay, so it literally I just I just came back from a backpacking trip where I went to Eastern Washington because it's a little warmer there. I'll just wait for you to finish drinking your applesauce. Fuck. She's like like sucking it out too. So it's a little warmer there, but it was still kind of cold, right? Mm -hmm. So we hike up to this fire lookout tower. And technically, we're at the time of year where the gate is supposed to be open because there's no more snow and you can drive all the way to the tower. So I'm like, oh, this would be a nice easy one to like ease certain people who don't like hiking into the hiking season with me. We get there, the gate is closed. And I was like, oh, fuck. And all of a sudden, now we have to get our packs out, strap our packs on, and hike with all of our food and gear up to this tower, even though we weren't really planning on that. So we have, like, regular food. We don't have, like, like lightweight freeze-dried food or anything. We have, like, one of those big things of water with, like, the handles and, like, the spout. Rookie mistake. What are you doing? Well, I thought we were driving to it. So this guy Did you like, not look it up and see if it was open? It said it was open. Open the gate then. It was locked. Open it. It was locked. Just open it. So we get, we're like sitting there at the gate and I'm like, I'm really sorry, babe, but we're going to have to hike up to the tower. And he was like, this is not what I was promised. And I was like, I'm so sorry. And this guy comes down on a dirt bike and I like roll down the window and I'm like, I'm like, hey, do you know why the gate's closed? And he's like, well, they were doing maintenance on it this morning. And for some reason when they left, they shut and locked the gate. And I was like, shit. And he was like. He was like, well, if you want, like, I can take one of your guys' packs. Like, I can ride it up there and then come back for the other one. And I was like, I was like, I'll be good with my pack. But, like, if you want to take his up there, that'd be great. And he was like, yeah, I'll go I'll go park down here. This is where you should park. And then I'll take it up there for you. We get to the car. And he's like, I'm not letting him take my pack up. And I was like, why? And he was like, because then I look like a wuss because you're carrying your pack. But I need somebody else to take mine up for me. And I was like. Trust me, you want him to carry your pack. I've been hiking with my pack. This is my, it was my ninth Mom, hike. Mom, you should have just gave in, let your husband have his pride and make the dirt bike man also take your backpack. <laughs> Why wouldn't you just do so that? So we decided to just give him the water. So he took the water up for us. And I was like, I was like, I should have just given him my pack and just taken Shed's pack when we got like halfway up. Because like halfway up, Shed was like... I should have given him my pack. <laughs> yeah, why does everyone have so much pride? Just give it up. Give up your pack. Both well, of you. Both of you should have just been well, like, Well, he couldn't yeah. have carried them both. Well, he said he would come back down. Yeah, and he would have too. But I'm I'm totally used to my weight. I've been carrying it now for weeks. But it was so fucking amazing. Like, we got up there and, like, it was really cold. But we got up there. There was a heater. They had a heater in there. A heater. It was amazing. They also had a fridge, too. It was really cool. Damn but my point, anyway, was this. It was so windy up there that the hike up, we were really cold. My fingers looked like that for hours. Nope. No, so thank you. I basically, like, the whole tips of my fingers are, like, white, white, white. Mine haven't started fully changing color. They'll get a little splotchy right now, but, like, it's not horrible. Mm -hmm. But, like, they don't turn white yet, but they do, like, hurt like a motherfucker. Anyway, so I'm I'm doubtful that I will get him. Are you vaping in here? Yeah. What the fuck are you doing? We are in a very small room together right now. What are you vaping? First of all, I hit my vape all the time in here. Okay. What are you vaping? I'm vaping matcha. It's a flume. Okay. Pebble. Cool. And it's matcha flavored. So apparently we're vaping in the studio now. <laughs> I vape in the studio all the time. I just kind of hit it over here and usually put it in my pocket. But I did like a trick. So that's why she like noticed that I was vaping. It's actually, that doesn't smell bad. So It literally just tastes like sweet. Do you want to hit it? No. Hit it. No. It just tastes like matcha. No. It literally tastes like matcha. What is it though? Is it nicotine? What is it? What's well, in yeah, it? it's nicotine. How do you... I don't know how to hit it. Just this. hit it. Just suck on it. Just You just suck on it? Just suck on it. How much? Do though? it like lightly. Hit it lightly. Just like a little... Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah. It just tastes like... 
matcha. It tastes sweet to me. This is all this tastes like. Last time Maddie talk, talked me into hitting anything, yeah. I like wanted to jump out the window. I so. talked her into hitting a <laughs> grape aloe puff bar. No, I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about when I smoked a joint on the back oh, deck. <laughs> and then was I like, to jump out the fucking I gotta window. go to bed because I feel like I'm gonna jump out the window. <laughs> By the way, if you don't know this about me, I am not a pot smoker. I can't do it. So I'm either suicidal or I'm like concerned that the person I'm with is going to kill themselves. Like I literally have like laid in my tent at night and been like, don't jump off the cliff. That cliff is really close. Don't jump off the cliff. And then I'm like, what if Willow jumps off the cliff? Like, like I literally, I don't know what's wrong with me. Why would you or Willow jump off the cliff? We wouldn't. But in my mind, like, I feel like I'm going to go jump off the cliff. And then Maddie's like, you just, you just have to get used to it. Like, you just got to yeah, push because, past like, that. Most like, you just got to get past like, it. that anxious smoking, like, everything is terrifying. You're smoking in someone's car. Which is what everybody school, told me when I was in high school. Just, the cops are coming. But to be fair, when I was in high school and even most of my life, it hasn't been legal, but my friends would always say, oh, the paranoia, that gets better. That goes away. Like you won't, it won't give you anxiety. Like you'll be fine. It never did. It never went away for me. It never worked for me, but I literally like, I think you have to smoke past that. I, I think feel you just like if I smoked through. past that, I would probably jump out the window. I'm not even kidding. Anyway. Okay. We're so fucking far off track right now. I don't even know how to get back. Okay. All because of my goddamn <laughs> applesauce. The, your applesauce started it and your vape ended it. And now we need to get back on track. True. I could probably get your phone paid for before they shut it off. Um, though, well, it just was in case. really easy to pay my phone bill because my phone's not even under my name. It's still under my dad's name. Oh. I just literally went on. And since I know his passwords, I was able to log on. <laughs> and since I have the phone number, it, was, it sent me the login information. And oh, I was yeah. able to just like change it change my yeah. payment so that i pay it now instead of him paying it i like it i like it a lot but i didn't have to go into t-mobile and change my name or anything <laughs> and when they call me is this keith murray yeah adulting at its best right here <laughs> i think so you know what's funny is i'm still on your dad's bank account and a while back he was like hey do you think you could take yourself off of my bank account and i was like do i have to go in to do that and he was like yeah and i was like then now <laughs> he was it's like not- Damn. (laughs) Damn. Just on my count. I'm like, we've been divorced for 10 years. If it hasn't happened yet. If it hasn't happened yet and you haven't opened a new account yet, is it really necessary? He's never going to open a new account. You know that, man. (laughs) It's not like, if I haven't stolen your money yet, you're probably in the clear. Like, it's probably fine. (laughs) I don't know how you just calmly take a breath between. I have to, like... Inhale, like it is. I am gonna conscious. be so fucking annoyed with myself when I'm editing this. <laughs> all the times that I've breathed <laughs> into the mic, I'm gonna be like, "What the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> to myself, I get annoyed with myself sometimes when I edit. I'm just like, "Why?" <laughs> Mostly, I get annoyed with you, but sometimes I get annoyed with myself too. Yeah, whatever. Um. Well, the almond mom thing didn't start coming on until almond mom. Yeah. What's an almond mom? You're technically an almond mom. What the fuck is it? Do I feel more? I don't want to know what an almond mom is. I don't want to know. Almond mom or like ingredients household. What does that mean? Where like your pantry is basically just full of ingredients. You mean for like cooking? Yeah. Like, you don't have, like, a fuck ton of snacks or anything. We're, this is an ingredients household that we are in. The house is full of ingredients to make other things not full of just Is that why and all of foods? my children every day, every second of every day, are like, there's nothing to eat in this house? Yes, because it's an except ingredients for, household. Except for Chocolate Phoenix. chips and peanut butter. We used to uh, microwave the Sick, marshmallows when we lived in the old house. <laughs> so Phoenix is the only child of mine that will walk into the kitchen and find herself something to eat. Because she's saying... never known any difference. <laughs> So now I'm an almond mom. I, I feel like I should be super offended by that, but I don't even know. You care you have cashews or almonds on you at all times. Does that not make you I an literally just mom? ate a bowl of cashews? I know. I actually prefer not to eat almonds. I don't like how they like they get, get stuck in my, my teeth. teeth. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. Almond mom. 
Please tell me that someone else understands what I'm saying. D- did you make that up? No, this is not. This I'm is- not making this up. I am 100% dead ass serious. I can go on TikTok right now and find a TikTok please about it. Please don't. Please don't. Oh, my God. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, so I just said something. I just got caught vaping again. <laughs> I just said something that, like, Madison was like, what? And I look over at her and there's like smoke just like pouring out of her mouth. Are you fucking kidding me? I just hit it a little bit. And then that shot July 13th. 